Okay. So Chico's not happy about going down the rabbit hole. Well, Chico's not and, happy about things being thrown at him. Okay, and well, I'll say this much. M. Night Shyamalan opened strong in his cinematic career. Yep, he sure did. The I mean, Sixth Sense, yeah. which is considered by many to be a modern suspense slash horror slash uh, you know classic of uh, and will stand the test of time. But and and. It requires multiple viewings to actually understand it and get the full spectrum of all the stuff that happened. Yeah, it's the second viewing where you go, wow. Oh. Yeah. And um, he had a few other films that were pretty good. Uh, Unbreakable was considered a little too a little too out there. But overall, peop- but overall, as time has gone on, people have actually warmed to it. And it actually has better reception now than it did when it was released. Then after that, he did Signs. Now, Signs... <laughs> now, here's the thing about it. I like Signs uh, for several reasons. Number one, the level of suspense and the level of... the level of... You know, the palpable tension that is always there because of this looming threat, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think is done wonderfully. And then, I think where a lot of people sort of fell off of it was the third act, whenever the invasion truly started. That's where a lot of people kind of fell off. And, you know, because, you know, you had, and and there were some disappointments with that, that, but I still felt the film delivered a lot. But I think the one thing that really threw people in the second act, you know, the, you know, because, you know, there's the initial discovery act, and then there's the investigation arc Mm -hmm. with, you know, Mel Gibson going to that, doctor's place and trying to find you know trying to find out if these things are really real or if they're just a bunch of people fooling around Mm -hmm. and he looks under the door and and the claw comes out and almost gets him i think that right there was done wonderfully as well because you don't see the monster you only see part of it right i thought that part was super weird well that because they had because shimelon was actually like in it and he's like it's trapped in the closet or whatever and they cut the fingers off the thing and like yeah, it was, I don't know, it was super awkward. Like, well, I don't, I, I didn't feel it was awkward. I felt that he was trying, he was trying, he still had it in his mind that it wasn't real. Right, mm-hmm. it wasn't real, and he was trying to convince himself that it wasn't real. And he went in there to try and confront the confront the thing as though it were a person, as though it were a human being. Right, and instead, and instead, nope. it literally comes out of nowhere and almost gets him, and. And then the uh, okay the the beginning of the invasion arc what of the invasion act was <clears throat> there was actually some palpable tension there because the coal shoot scene that kid drives me crazy oh I know I know if you know they're coming after you why do you stand right in front of a grate he did he didn't see it though it was the dark during that one scene you remember because the light got knocked out right but like that was their house right well that was their house but they but they rarely go into the basement I don't know I just feel like I wouldn't. <clears throat> go near like giant great in he place. didn't know it was there and he's a kid i mean honestly do you know how much dumb shit i did as a kid you know my dad told me to touch a, pe- a wall that he just painted he said don't touch that what did i just do? what did i why did i do that as a kid i don't know may as kids sometimes we that com- last week i didn't do that last week uh-huh sure you didn't sure what the fuck are you talking so about? That explains the tan handprint on the back of your laptop there. What are you talking about? I'm trying to do a bit, Nate. Our bits are terrible. I'm trying to do a bit. So what are we watching? Okay. It's M. Night Shyamalan, oh, Yeah, M. Night Shyamalan. Well, I was talking about signs. Okay, signs, uh, and then after that, the wheels really started to come off. For we him. don't have to talk about every movie. Yeah. Ever <clears throat> no, you know, the village, the happening, Lady in the Lady Water. In the water. Mm. Bunch of really, really bad films. And then The Visit came out. And surprisingly... Oh, with a, the old people? Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Caught some people off guard, and actually, people said it was pretty good. Now, Split came out. And they said that this is probably, in terms of pure horror, probably his best work. Hmm. And I, I was surprised by that. I watched this movie in theaters, and I liked it. 
I liked it a lot. I thought the story was actually really good. When, now, when did this come out? Uh, came out uh this year actually, oh. early this year, and I think it was a January release, so first of the year, and it was really really good. So, anyway, Split by uh, the review by CinemaSense, everything wrong with Split in 16 minutes or less. Well, uh, here we go. All right. Oh, yeah, that opening, the ambient music that they had in the beginning was just... Mm-hmm. I'm actually glad this is a free movie logo. For a second there, I thought I was about to accidentally watch After Earth. <laughs> That's <laughs> another one! Those yes. might amount to restraint in the current movie climate, but it's still sinful as sh- Man, Anya Taylor-Joy didn't even look this lonely in The Witch. That's what happens when you mean you the Vavitch? So Casey is that weird outsider girl that no one is friends with? Where is this high school where the misunderstood outsider girl is also the hottest woman? I believe you wanted to invite everyone. Dad, I can't invite everyone in my art class except for one person. Wait, her f***ing art class was the only target for invites? Is Claire in third grade? I'm proud of you, I think. <laughs> she gets detention a lot, and she yells at teachers sometimes. Expositional parenting. This abduction takes place outside a pretty f***ing crowded strip mall in broad daylight, but nobody notices the length You'd be surprised. Of three teenagers. This is the one thing he's so he's really funny. He does these <laughs> weekly videos. <laughs> the girls' final moments of freedom are spent discovering the Cinema Sins YouTube channel for the first time. It's mere <laughs> <laughs> word and could not be used for anything except building suspense. Certainly not for driving. Uh, Dennis shuts the trunk. That would imply that the tuning the um, has ended, right? So why does Casey like, see nothing? It's different. It's well, different. Getting set up in the parking <laughs> spot. Sees the spill leftovers right after he shuts the trunk. Did super clean freak Dennis just kick those to-go boxes over for fun after he knocked out Claire's dad? Also, geez, look at all those leftovers. Didn't those girls eat anything? Hey. I know we're going for suspense. They never the girls did. In the back were absorbed in their phones, but dude was in the car for 30 f***ing seconds before anyone says a f***ing word. That is entirely too many seconds. <laughs> Okay, several things here. First off, why does he immediately take off the mask after spraying the girls? That mask that wouldn't. Would that would be Clara Marcia, sure, but that's an airborne toxin, and this is a tightly. That's not how that works. Second, <coughs> doesn't know anything about the Casey in the front seat, but assume she'll be chill enough to let him work through some before he starts driving away. Third, I assume everything in the abducted teenager handbook says you get the fuck out of there immediately, rather than waste several seconds contemplating the consciousness of the abducted teens. Basically, I'm saying fuck this teenage abduction in more ways than just regular fuck this teenage abduction. God damn it, you literally yep. have your pinky on the lock, your hand on the handle, Click. and he's not even looking at you. Green light. What the hell is going on? What are we doing here? What happened to my dad? Claire asks Casey a series of questions that there is no way for her to know the answer to. True. This movie is really just an excuse to showcase Anya Taylor-Joy's ability to cry one tear at a time. Ooh. It's the sexy cry. Man, this elderly woman lives at the top of a three-story walk-up, but isn't the slightest bit out of breath when she walks in. Maybe she's a superhero. Three students <laughs> abducted. The father of one of the students woke up days thinking of Russia. He found the kids and the car missing. Wait, every time we see Dennis use the sleep spray, it takes a long f***ing time for the victim to wake up. It takes at least 30 minutes to get from King of Prussia to the Philadelphia Zoo. And the girls woke up after Dennis threw them in the cell. So Dad was just f***ing laid out in the middle of a crowded parking lot until he woke up with no help. I knew Philly was a rough city and all, but damn. Good, I knew there was going to be a Philly joke. This is a therapist's office. Parker lounger for analysis, check. Cases full of books that look like they've been read, got it. Weird gazelle-looking artifact to spur a conversation? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. The subject of Barry's email says, we need you. But when Dr. Fletcher opens the email, the subject is, R.E. No Subject. I, for one, am excited about the spin-off film, No Subject, the case of the missing email subject. Dr. Fletcher has the most generic computer desktop in history, with no icons except desktop and recycle bin. But I guess the only way to get the email is to click on that nondescript trapezoid on the bottom left. <laughs> also, this doctor apparently saves emails that were sent over four years before this movie came out. Also, even though some of these emails are clearly about appointments and involve patients, Barry is the only name that has the last name de-identified. It doesn't matter if you open that door, Claire. There's a second locked door. Right, but if she's able to unlock this door just by turning the lock knob with persistence, who's to say she can't do that again? It's true. She drop a crazy ass bomb on him. Like make him watch The Last Airbender all the way through. <laughs> oh! oh! There's another one. The antagonist could easily be on the other side of the door cliche. Why do you do this? Why do you act like this? Why do you act like you're not one of us? Is Claire saying this because she and Marsha's personalities are so indistinguishable from each other that they might as well be the same person? Hive mind. Females are smarter than the males, but you know that. It's like humans. <laughs> This dad is a good dad, which guarantees that he'll be dead before the end of the movie. Yep. Maybe Casey yep. likes there so much because she's living half her life in expositional flashbacks. Boys make too much noise. <laughs> yes, they do. 
I'll let you know when I hear something that makes sense. Casey knows just what to do in this situation because she went deer hunting that time. Is that supposed to be like a, like a tailored jacket, but I'm going to hand print it with newspaper headlines. So this is Dennis, who's posing as Barry, and he's only there to obfuscate the abduction from Dr. Fletcher because he knows Barry sent her an email earlier. But if this is Dennis, why does he not only have Barry's accent, but he also knows about fashion? Dennis is supposed to be a completely different personality. My point is, f*** this movie's explanation for how these personalities interact. Those work. When I last spoke to them, they believed you were a model employee. So much so that they let you live in an underground f***ing bunker on site. Does anybody care about us? Yes. The University of Paris has asked me to do a lecture, in fact. People are believing more. Because they're rejecting the idea that you need evidence and stuff. Also, listen, even if I ignore the controversy about dissociative identity disorder being real, diagnosable pathology, there is certainly very little evidence of it being a dangerous disorder, except, you know, outside of a universe created by the same dude that did the happening. I'm going to take this part of the movie with the biggest grain of salt ever created. Good call. Yes. Yes. Your sketches, Barry? You're you might not have a heart attack there, bud. Even though Dr. Fletcher is pretty sure Barry's not Barry, this prompts her to do nothing until he emails her again. They always use their thumbs. Flick it, flick it. I'm not entirely sure these two elderly women aren't watching porn. Absolutely free. <gasps> yep. I don't know how you work with those people. What people? Your patients. That's paceist. I don't believe it. Yeah. No offense. This was Barrett's exact response to everyone who said, No, really, Split is good, man. You would totally love it. Who be expects me to believe that these three girls are all able to see through the crack in the door at the same time, even though Marcia is looking at the back of Claire's head and Casey is crouching near the center of the door. Also, if they're looking through the crack, why is Patricia's head obscured? Because it's more interesting to reveal that Patricia and Dennis are actually the same person when he opens the door? Is this already off? The way this movie is set up, the only time the other identities don't know what each other is doing depends solely on the convenience of the plot. He's not allowed to touch you. Not only is it rarely diagnosed, it's super rare for people with DID to not only have the means, but time to play dress up for every single f***ing personality. Well, were they open this time with the new evidence? You submitted video of a dog acting differently to one of your patients at different times. With the over 600 patients her filing cabinet suggested, you'd think she'd be able to muster up better evidence than that. Speak of them like they're supernaturally gifted, like, like they have powers or something. Forge arguing. We have hmm. brain scans now. DID patients have changed their body chemistry with their thoughts. I'm guessing she didn't have that evidence before the due date, forcing her to send the dog video instead. Also, it's telling that I would much more easily accept being exposed to gamma radiation, or being bitten by a super spider, or being a bioengineered raccoon as a more plausible origin for a superhuman story than this. Jesus, Ooh. even for a doctor, this is some unintelligible handwriting, and there's no chance Fletcher would be able to get any information We made that joke earlier. Yep. <laughs> On the moon. As a nine-year-old, Hedwig loves to play games, and one of his favorites is the pronoun game. Oh, no. You're not the lady. What are you, blind? Hey, no need for that sass, considering you all know you live in the same person's body, and you know you're stuck inside one person's head. I stole a life from Mr. Dennis, but he'll be back real soon, and he'll know and get angry. And they're aware of each other. But Mr. Dennis? He said that you followed those two girls for four days? So were Marsha and Claire together for four days? Or did Dennis follow Claire and Patricia follow Marsha? Wait. Also, if he was stalking them, why did he pick the moment after the birthday party when another girl and Claire's dad was with them to finally abduct them? Come the fuck on. We just saw Hedwig in full Hedwig costume walk away. So it took less than 13 fucking seconds for him to change mentally and sartorially into Dennis? This zoo just happens to have human-sized ductwork to properly regulate the temperature of this underground bunker. Ooh. Claire should have known she'd be caught after hiding in what is clearly Davy Jones' locker. Ah. What? It's, it's ruined. It's dirty. Remove it. Because we have hot teenage girls in our movie, and we're going to make the most of it, damn it. Well, I see your friend again. So why didn't he put them in different cells in the first place? There's obviously plenty of room, and a guy as fastidious as Dennis should know that it's more difficult to deal with three versus one in an enclosed area. Mm -hmm. Take off your skirt, take off your shirt. Clothes you got all dirty from the dust. What's casually played as one of Dennis's pervy character traits is another cheap excuse for the filmmaker to add a little disturbing sex appeal to this movie. The differences in the identities can be dramatic. So much so that they feel the need to dress up individually so moviegoers can easily distinguish them. Have these individuals, through their suffering, unlocked the potential of the brain? No. Jerry, the <laughs> half-conscious fast food purveyor, did you originally say Oh, hello there, M. Night Shyamalan of a ding-dong. He did in a minor suicidal gesture. Goddamn, M. Night was apparently possessed by Aaron Sorkin for a minute. <laughs> so look around wow. Damn. Shyamalan continues his Hitchcockian desire to have a cameo in all of his movies, only this time his character is Hitchcockian hacker Hooving Hooters. What are you up to, Dennis? 
Or is it Patricia who's deciding things? Or we can make up all new personalities, like the ones that were casually mentioned previously in the therapy office. Linda? LeBron? Aloysius? What are those assholes up to? <laughs> Fuck that, I wanna know... I mean, I'm not gonna die. <laughs> Sorry. I, I wanna know what Gavin's up to. Let's go. It's got paprika in it. Damn it, as much as I'm bagging on this movie for having a ridiculous premise, James McAvoy's performance is awesome. I'll take a sin off for Dennis, another for Patricia, and half a sin for Hedwig, because it's good acting, but he still kind of annoys me. I've heard that Asian people's music aids digestion. Citation needed. All the potentially lethal or incapacitated Citation guys fucking in this kitchen. Marcia goes with the clunky folding chair, which is a 100% rate of ineptitude both in movies and WWE events. So the Beast is a yeah. legendary figure in Kevin's mind, but Hedwig says he's done terrible things to people before. Does he mean in actuality? Because Kevin Barry's been chilling at this job for 10 years. Fletcher's never met the Beast, so when the f*** did that happen? Every one of us has to wait in a chair, and Barry, he decides who stands in the light. If all the personalities are sitting in chairs waiting for their turn in the light, then what the f*** are they doing in the meantime? They all have fidget spinners or something to keep them occupied? I don't see why not. But the only degree we're clearly shown here is a master's, so I'm calling in to question her qualifications. Hmm. Also, two lame universities, obviously a made-up school anyway. Can I <laughs> no, it ain't! No, it's not. ...in the middle of the night due to garden variety issues. And Dr. Fletcher is the anti-Sherlock. She's seen the news reports of the girls that were taken on the same day Barry emailed her. She also knows Dennis and Patricia support this terrible beast character, and that they're likely at the wheel here. And yet she hasn't done jack to alert the police or a colleague or anyone that could be helpful in figuring out if there's a link to the girls. She's just been jacking off with M. Night while eating hooters. You and Patricia have never met the Beast. That's because he's not an altar. Aha, uh -huh, case closed. Nice job, Karen. Let's wrap this up and head down to Applebee's while it's still happy hour. Hang on, does every altar get their own room? And if so, how efficient is that? There were 23 of them, and Barry has the light the majority of the time. So is he supposed to clean up all their feed the gerbils, etc.? This dance is equal parts hilarious and terrifying, making it essentially a Drake music video. <laughs> I'm being yep. held in a basement. I've been abducted with two other girls. Tell Larry and Fish I said hi. Tell him I still got his orange headphones. I would be angry at this stupid dick on the other side of the line that doesn't care about a distress call, but I'm more annoyed that this asshole has a those <laughs> orange fucking headphones. <laughs> Becoming clear that Dennis's real superhuman power is the ability to completely change outfits, this time in 21 fucking seconds. The beast is a sentient creature who represents the highest form of human's evolution. Poor Anya Taylor-Joy, always getting involved with godlike figures that demand personal sacrifice. Jesus, try a comedy. <laughs> he believes the time of ordinary humanity is over. Wait, are we talking about the same beast that one of the X-Men? <laughs> and the one that helped mm -mm. Charles Xavier all those years when he looked a lot like Dennis? Mm -mm. I was gonna ask for the last shirt, but, but I won't. Because it needs to be slowly ripped off her as she tries to escape later. Mm-hmm. The email received sound was what got Fletcher over to look at the screen. But that has been going on for the last 15 minutes and she just heard it? We're very similar, you and I. We are very similar, you and I, cliche. <laughs> I'm a huge advocate for people with mental health issues getting good jobs. In fact, it's a great thing. It is. But even people without severe psychiatric illnesses should be looked at suspiciously if they live underground in a fucking zoo. Especially if they work there. What about a woman in Germany? who'd been blind for 10 years. Then three of her identities developed sight or optical nerves regenerated because of her beliefs. With discoveries like this, Dr. Fletcher should just leave the therapeutic field and dive straight into the clergy. <laughs> He's on the move. What does that mean? I don't understand. Dr. Fletcher would be excellent at cinema sins. Who are you going to meet? Him. Damn it. They were about to get the pronoun game. Conversation yeah. Without playing another pronoun game. We need to get out Let's play the pronoun game. Who was the first to try and escape certain death 50 movie minutes ago suddenly remembers she still needs to escape certain death. Oh good, Casey finally found Kevin's hard drive of exposition. This air box says unable to connect to the internet, even though the Wi-Fi signal at the bottom right shows full bars. And there's no indication that there is no internet connection. Ooh. That this even sort of works. Fletcher mentioned earlier that the beast hypothetically lives in a train yard, since Kevin's dad was probably killed by Mr. Glass and Unbreakable. But why does Kevin need to use this particular train to morph into Beastie, other than providing ample time for the girls to try to escape? Yeah, when you see a tough DID case like this, there's always one asshole personality that has to be addressed by his last name. Looking at you, <coughs> Mr. Pritchard, it's <laughs> a completely empty train car with the lights ominously turned off for him to unleash the beast. <laughs> It's an animal! <laughs> but how the f*** would you know this? This can't be the first multiple personality turned supernatural serial cannibal case you've worked, right, Detective Dooley? <laughs> Jeremy? Jeremy? ...wherewithal to write Kevin's full name down, but isn't able to say it out loud. 
which has a much better shot of making the captive girls aware of it. More like Vane's McAvoy, am I right? The beast loves Dr. Fletcher enough that he cuddles her to death. Okay, even if this is a supernatural cannibal Bear beast, hug. why just eat a little bit of the midsection and leave almost the entirety of delicious Marsha meat lying on the floor? Ugh. Let's go. There have now been two savage murders, and Casey has heard screams from neither of them. <laughs> Claire Carpaccio. Yeah, it's creepy and everything, but does the beast really need to be crawling on the walls right now to get to Casey? Or is he just showing the f off? Holy sh! Showing the fuck off. Just two teenagers. Kevin's hands are amazingly blood free. You kill me. Wait, 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 wait! Fletcher said it would be goddamn devastating for the altars to hear Kevin's full name. So if it's so powerful, why does it only last less than two fucking minutes again? Kevin went on ground. Kevin is asleep. I doesn't saying that ain't work after the first time. Because M. Night says it doesn't work after the first time, motherfucker. Ah. Even though he could easily kill her, the beast prefers to Padme Casey's shirt for future viewing. Impure for the untouched. Let's talk about the beast's plan. He wants to rid the world of the untouched, but why? Is this just a tiny twist on horror movies always focused on killing the f***ing virgin? Let him show the world how powerful we can be. Powerful enough to convince the movie studio to make a sequel. Wait, it's like that crazy guy in the wheelchair that they put away 15 years ago. Was it? Apparently no other weird murders have happened in the metropolitan Philadelphia over the last 15 years, leading this waitress to open the news about the one other link to a twisty Shyamalan movie. Mr. Glass. So is this the big Damn it. Shyamalan twist? Yep. This movie shares a universe with Unbreakable? Yep. Considering the current trends in movies, I wouldn't consider the creation of a cinematic universe a twist. It's mm -hmm. really more of an expectation at this point. Wait, David's still working a menial labor job that requires a Dickies work shirt? How has he not moved on to superhero elsewhere? The DCEU could have used his ass for the last five years. It's true! Does someone need a hug? Why do you do this? Why do you act like this? Why do you act like you're not one of us? One of us! One of us. One of us. Coast, we get together. Have a few laughs. I was gonna make that joke earlier. <laughs> I've heard that Asian people's music aids digestion. No. No more wire hangers. Maybe I could watch you dance. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to that copyright strike. Would you like to live deliciously? Yes. The beast? He's coming for you. Don't mock me. <laughs> okay. That was certainly a movie that got made and is apparently getting a sequel. Well... Honestly, I don't mind it. I liked it. Was it groundbreaking? No. Was it stupendous? No. Was it good? Yeah. I found it to be good. And, you know, you can... I've, wa I've watched it. I've watched it now. I've watched it twice. Mm-hmm. And uh, yep, we are actually getting a sequel. Yeah, Mr. Glass. Glass. Yeah. yeah it's. I am. Not sure how I feel about that. Uh, it's it, Samuel Jackson's coming back, so that's something. Yeah. Every movie's better if Samuel L. Jackson is in it. That's true. Imagine if Samuel Jackson would have been in this. Imagine him dropping a motherfucker. <laughs> it's like true. it's like motherfucker, make up your mind. <laughs> mm. Like. Samuel Jackson, he's in a blonde wig. He's the fourth girly kidnapped in the other room. <laughs> That's the movie I want to see. I want to see that, too. He'll be, like, he'll be like, he's like, where's my Cheerios at, bitch? <laughs> no, 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 go with Hey, me. I ain't removing my skirt for nothing, motherfucker. <laughs> go with me here. Go with me on this. So, we have Samuel L. Jackson in a blonde wig. Yes. Sure. The best idea. As Valley Girl Bang. I did it! I don't know that that would it. work, though, because no, uh, the, the appeal of Sam Jackson is that he's Sam Jackson. He doesn't sound like a Valley Girl. No, 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 no. What if it's, it's still just Samuel L. Jackson doing, like, with his normal a Valley voice. Girl. But he's he's got the Valley Girl speech. Let me, let me try this. Let me Do try it, this. this let gonna... me try this. Gag me with <clears> a spoon, <throat> I guess. This is going to be okay. amazing. Okay, okay. Like, let me ask you a question, motherfucker. What are you like, 
trying to pull with all that like shit there. Uh, I don't know. Uh, as we, hold on. Let's see. Or let me, let me, Sam, let me, or, let me, let me, let me try and balance as, it out. Like, let me Samuel try and balance Jackson it out. As, as this girl in the blonde wig versus Valley Girl Bane. Not, well, okay. Play them against he, each other. He, that's also fine. But like, I think this is hilarious. I think we've like, got something here. I don't understand what you're on about. You don't understand what I'm on about. That motherfucker's gonna eat us. <laughs> well, pretty good. I wasn't expecting like the weird supernatural twist. I thought just the Beast was like this alternate personality. He that, is. That's bananas. He, he is. is. Yeah, he well, was like he was like Spider Manning walls and stuff, and well, like uh, that's one apparently of, that's, superhuman that's, strength. That's the leap of that's the leap of. Uh, the leap of quote unquote faith that this movie takes with DID. DID, uh, dissociative identity disorder, uh, states that whenever a personality takes over, the human body, the human's body changes to match that personality. So if he's a nine year old boy, he has the strength of a nine year old boy. If he is a 32 year old, like, dock worker, mm-hmm. you know, jack to the gills. He has the strength of a 33-year-old dock worker. And uh, if he's some sort of superhuman monster, some sort of God help monster you all. That, well, here's, a, here's an interesting thing about the human body. Human beings, as we are right now, only use 30% of our full muscle mass. Did you know that? Well, we, we can't really utilize our muscle mass because our ligaments don't connect to actually utilize it. Mm-hmm. Well, there's... That's like, Chimps have less wrist flexibility, but they're freakishly strong because yep. their connections are much more robust and placed differently. Well, but they they don't have dexterity. Well, that's well, that's one thing about about uh, having having more having more control over your. Mu- you see, it's not just the ligaments. You see, our brain is connected to them. Well, our, I mean, our brain is connected to them, and though well, it tells us to stop doing things when it hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Because it doesn't want to damage anything. Mm-hmm. But who's to say it could not be compelled to work with the rest of your muscles? Well, I mean, yeah, people like people get hopped up on PCP and do things outside of their normal strength range, but then they break their own arms in the process. So, mm-hmm. I mean, well, that's well, I that's if because our bodies can only cuffs. take so much. I can break these cuffs. You can't, you can't break, break these those cuffs. cuffs. I can break these cuffs. You've seen that, right? No, that that's one of pull, the funniest pull things. Pull that up right now. Okay, okay. But no, it's short, and you need to see it. Well, I mean, I haven't seen this, so it's not like it really matter. <laughs> well, I mean, but I can break these cuffs. It's it's there. It is. What is that? Sounds familiar. What is it from? It's, it's just, just a dude. A, it's just a dude on cops. The, yeah, the, this one. This is it. Yeah. Get back in front of the car. That man's Why? legs are missing. What? Stay right there. What happened to his legs? I don't know. Did he get cotton hilled? Stand up straight. What is wrong with you? Take a deep breath. It'll be all right. Take a deep breath. I can break these cuffs. You can't break those cuffs. <laughs> we appreciate your cooperation now, okay? <laughs> What's that? I can break these cups. I can break these cups. You can't break <laughs> these cups. It's I mean, just that was a pretty jacked dude. Yeah, yeah but, but he can't break those cuffs. But, but where were his legs? He didn't have any shins. Well, he <laughs> he I lost think, them in the war like Cotton Hill. I, I was gonna say, I think, I think he. Uh, imagine if Peter Dinklage was like that. Peter J- Dinklage was like jacked. That's like terrifying. That. Could you? Uh, no one would mess with Tyrion Lannister. Then. Do you think anybody's gonna mess with Tyrion Lannister now? He drinks I mean, and he knows yeah, things. Of. It's true. He drinks and he knows things. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't mess with him. Well, so I mean, they they try to mess with him. It doesn't work. Well, out. no, he's I've hungry. witnessed. Uh, well, back back on the subject of like people doing things outside of their normal means, uh-huh. I witnessed something. Uh, it was actually crazy. A guy. There was a helicopter crash. This guy was. Uh, this guy was doing something in a helicopter, and he crashed. Mm-hmm. Uh, his friend, who was following him on the ground, um, <clears throat> went over with another worker to try and free the guy. Turns out his legs were caught under the under the chassis. Uh, mm-hmm. The glass broke, and his legs went through the chassis, and he was caught, and, uh, and they couldn't get him out. The guy grabs the front of the helicopter 
and lifts the front of the helicopter up. Yeah. And yeah, freeze. Like those moms that lift minivans. Yeah. Adrenaline, man. The the adrenaline and the and the human body is capable of crazy things. It happens that, all the time. Yeah, yeah. That we aren't that we are not. I, I worked with a guy who got a boat dropped on him, and this dude just picked it up, picked the trailer up, boat still attached to the trailer, and was fine. Mm-hmm. That's unbelievable. Just, yeah, I saw the pictures. Like it literally snapped his leg clean. Snapped like there was a bone clean. sticking out of it. Ah. It's like Pierce Bros and Dante's Peak, except it was his shins. Ah. Oh God. Yeah, no, I, 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 un- uh, yeah, I yeah, know that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Just... Yeah. Of course, one thing about it is the guy's ass crack is hanging out, the guy who's lifting. Yeah. He's, because he's a, but you're not worried a, about your pants, he, bud. He's a pretty beefy dude. Crack it, kills. <laughs> All right. You know uh, what? And on, We've that, and on that, that bombshell, bombshell, it's time to end. Thank you very much break. for watching. Whatever the hell this was. Break these cuffs. Good night. You can't break those cuffs. I can break these <laughs> cuffs.